Hello, welcome to another episode of Teeing Off. I'm RJ, and let's just get right into it. Uh, had a good week on DraftKings last week. We had the first place lineup in the ten, in the three dollar entries of the PGA ten thousand dollar birdie event. Um, yeah, we're first place after thirty six holes. So I'm pretty good about that. Uh, paid out four twenty five on a three dollar bet. So pretty good return on investment there. Uh, ended up finishing sixth. So overall pretty good. Um, probably the best week I've had. Yeah, it was something to look forward to for this week. Know that my uh, my stats and everything I'm going in the right direction. Let's just say that. So the actual tournament, the CJ Cup at Nine Bridges, was won yet again. He seems to be winning everything these days by Justin Thomas. Justin won in a playoff over Mark Leishman at nine under. Cameron Smith finished third at eight under. Uh, yeah, it was a really good event. There was some really good golf played, especially between Leishman and JT down the stretch. Really exciting. The course uh, looked really good. It wasn't exactly the Scottish Highlands that we were told it was going to be. But no, it was a good course. It was a good event. Uh, good for JT. He moves up to third in the world with his seventh PJ Tour win. He may as well be first in the world because he's clearly the most dominant player right now. If we just look at his last 10 weeks on the PJ Tour, he won his first major, the PGA Championship. And then he won the Dell Technologies Championship. He won the FedEx Cup with his runner-up finish at the Tour Championship. He was part of the dominant U.S. team at the President's Cup. He went 3-1-1. And then he was rightfully voted PJ Tour Player of the Year after a five-win season last year. And now he's kicked off the new season with another victory at the CJ Cup. So it's just a matter of time until people are talking about him in the same breath as Jordan Spieth. Obviously, everyone talks about how they're friends, blah, blah, blah. That's been driven into the ground. But uh, good for him. Good for JT. While he was winning on Saturday night, Sunday, depending on where in the world you were, his buddy Jordan was golfing with Steph Curry and Barack Obama. Not a bad trade-off. I wonder what they would discuss over a round of golf. I have no idea. I have a feeling Mr. Trump would have come up once or twice. Also, another week, another Tiger Woods video. He released a video of him hitting his patented stinger shot, which he used to dominate with. So good to see him bringing that back. Good to see him um, in some better health. Um, Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler took to Instagram to kind of chirp him about his... Um, his stinger video, but it's good to see Tiger's uh, progressing, at least. Uh, he has his DUI hearing on Friday from the incident a few months ago. He will apparently enter a plea bargain. So moving on to this week, it is the 2018 WGC HSBC event in Shanghai. It's been held there for a few years. Once again, though, it's a no-cut event, unfortunately. Kind of getting tired of the no-cut events, especially with DraftKings. Especially when I was first place after 36 holes. That's when you want a cut. But uh, I digress. Once again, a no-cut event. It's a short field, 78 players or so, I believe, right in that range. Uh, the starting time, again, it's going to be Wednesday night at 10 p.m. That, um, that the golf actually starts on the Golf Channel. So if you're playing DraftKings, you're going to want to get your lineups in. I believe lineups lock at 8.50 tonight. So, yeah, make sure you're not waiting until last minute to get those in. Um, yeah, so they're in Shanghai. A bit of a interesting time whenever the golfers go overseas because of the media stuff they need to do. Um, so Dustin Johnson, Henrik Stenson, and... Sorry, Dustin Johnson, Henrik Stenson, Hao Tong Lee, and Hideki Matsuyama took part in probably the weirdest golf-related photo shoot I've ever seen in my entire life. Um... Basically, it's Hideki Matsuyama hovering over his trophy like he's trying to protect it. And DJ and the other guys are all hanging, I assume, off wires. But it looks like they're like flying in the background trying to come up, down and get the trophy from him. Very strange. But uh, yeah, check out my blog. I'll have, I'll have pictures of that and a more thorough description. Um, but in terms of the actual golf this week, the tournament host is Sheshan International Golf Course. It is a 7,266-yard par 72. So that, again, means we've got a lot of par 5s. 
Uh, it is Shanghai Region's first golf club, as well as it's one, one of its most exclusive. Um, and it's going to host for the 12th time in 13 editions of the HSBC Champions. To create the layout's drastic elevation changes, work crews reportedly moved more than 2 million cubic yards of earth. Yeah, that's a lot of earth. <laughs> Not long after its opening, Tiger Woods praised the layout as, quote, the crowning jewel of all of Asian golf. So pretty high praise there. Last year, Matsuyama became the first Asian winner in 18 years of WGC competition with an emphatic seven-stroke romp that stands as the largest in HSBC champions history. Matsuyama's seven-shot margin was the largest in a WGC event since Woods also won by seven at the 2013 WC Bridgestone Invitational. The win also capped a three-run event in which Matsuyama won the Japan Open and finished second to JT at the CIMB Classic. If you'll remember, it was a really hot start from Matsuyama last year that uh, had him well ahead of everything up until maybe halfway through the season. He, he really jumped out to a quick start last year. Um, obviously wants to do that again this year. Once again, the HSBC Championship looms as the year's final stop that brings together most of the top players from all corners of the globe. So in other words, before the end of the calendar year, it's the last time all the top players are probably going to be in the same place, or at least the majority of them, in a PJ Tour sanctioned event. Three events follow this one on the PJ Tour calendar. We've got Las Vegas, Mexico, and Sea Island, while the European Tour embarks on its three-event final series as their final regular season event. It's the last chance for European Tour players to position themselves ahead of the Turkish Airlines Open. Tommy Fleetwood leads that point race well ahead of Sergio Garcia, who is sitting out this week, and John Rahm. Fleetwood and Rahm will be in the field. Phil Mickelson, the only two-time winner of the event back in 07 and 09, he returns to China off an unbeaten President's Cup stint at Liberty National. He is still seeking his first victory, though, since the 2013 Open Championship. Pat Perez, winner of the CIMB Classic in Malaysia, and newly crowned Rookie of the Year Xander Shoffley, they're among the 16 men that are set to play all three stops on the Tour's expanded Asian Swing. Of those 16, Shaz Rivi is the only one who also teed it up at the Safeway Open to start the 2017-18 season. So, if you're looking further into the field, world number one Dustin Johnson and defending champion Hideki Imatsuyama, between the two they hold all four World Golf Championships. They are going to headline this 78-man field for the final WGC event of the calendar year. In all, the lineup boasts 18 of the top 25 in the world rankings, including the likes of... Ooh, John Rahm, Henrik Stenson, Jason Day, Matt Kuchar, Justin Rose, Paul Casey, Patrick Reed, Phil Mickelson, Xander Shopley, and Thomas Peters. In terms of the stats I'm going to look at this week, we do have some good course history to delve into, so that helps us out a bit. Uh, the main stats, as usual, I like throwing DraftKings points and birdies. Um, we've also got greens and regulation gained, strokes gained on par fives. And strokes gained par 4s, 450 to 500 yards, because the majority of the par 4s are that length this week. Um, the complementary stats, strokes gained approach, and strokes gained par 3s, 200 to 225, because that's where the majority of the par 3s are. And I'm also going to throw in strokes gained T to green as a very minor stat. Um, seems to be helpful, though. So I'm going to go over the spreadsheet. I'm going to go everyone. I'm going to go over everyone that's over $8,500, and then just the guys I like below that. Pretty much still the entire field. So, without further ado, the top tier has five guys in it. Um, that's over, that's the double digits over uh, 9,900. So, right off the top, the top guy is Dustin Johnson. He's 11,700. He has not played yet this uh, in this 2018 wraparound season, um, but in this tournament, he has pretty good history. He finished 35th last year, fifth the year before that, and won it the year before. And in my stats, which are over 24 rounds, um, Dustin sits third in the field. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama is the second ranked guy in terms of salary. He's 11,400. So luckily we're not seeing the 12,300, over 12,000 type of salaries that we were seeing in the past. Um, it'll allow you to take a guy like Hideki or Dustin if you'd like to. Uh, Hideki didn't play last week, but the week before he finished fifth. His tournament history, he won, of course, last year. Didn't play the year before, but 41st the year before that, and he is 4th in my stats. So all around looking pretty good for Hideki, 
Justin Rose at 10,600. He finished, he has actually not played in uh, the 2018 season, but uh, finished the playoffs off really strong, a 10th and a 2nd to finish off there. Um, his tournament history, he hasn't played here the last two years, but the two years prior to that, 48th and a 5th, so he has some good history here. And he sits 6th in my stats rankings. Jason Day is 4th. 10,200. He finished 11th last week, comes in with good form. He has, however, never played in this event. He sits 15th in my stats, uh, but first in a few categories, DraftKings points, birdies, and par 3 ranking. Uh, rounding up the double digits would be John Rahm. He sits at 10,000. Uh, recently on the European Tour, he missed a cut last week and had a 15th the week before that. He has not played in this event, but sits second in my stats. So of those five guys above 10,000, um, I mean, you could you could realistically play any of them. It's pretty top heavy though. Dustin Johnson and Hideki Masayama would be my two favorites from there. And realistically, I'll probably only play Hideki Matsuyama, um, and not too much out of my ten lineups. I'll probably play him in two. But all those guys, they all give reason enough to at least be included and at least be talked about. But uh, the only ones that jump out of the page really DJ and Hideki. So uh, below that, we've got 10 guys that are priced between 8,500 to 9,900. Uh, starting off with Mark Leishman. Mark is $9,900 this week. He finished second last week and has really good tournament history as well. Uh, didn't play last year, but the year before that finished 11th and then 9th the year before that. And he's fifth in my stats with first in strokes game par five. So Mark looks like a good guy to take this week. Uh, behind him, Brooks Kepka coming in at 9,700. Uh, recently, he finished 6th and 12th in the playoffs. Those was the last time he played. Uh, third okay here, 40th last year. And he sits 25th in my stats rankings. Henrik Stenson at 9,600. Hasn't played this year. Good tournament history, though. 2nd, 11th, 24th, and 34th. 31st the last four years. And he sits 11th in my stats. Uh, Paul Casey, another guy that looked, I like this week. 9,400. So priced pretty decently. 19th and 7th place finishes the last two weeks on the PJ Tour. Turn in history, 12th, 23rd, and 20th the last three years. And he sits first in my stats. So obviously Paul Casey is one guy I'm going to take a look at quite thoroughly this week. Uh, behind him, Matthew Fitzpatrick sits at 9,200. He comes over uh, continuing his, I guess not comes over because they're not in North America, but he's continuing his Euro swing. He uh, didn't play last week, but the two weeks before that, he finished 15th in both events on the European Tour. He hasn't played in this tournament, and he sits 36th in my stats. So he's a guy that if you he probably won't be as highly owned because of his price and his uh, European Tour status. So uh, I probably won't play him too much, but he might be a guy that you can uh, squeeze by on that's not very highly owned. Uh, Pat Perez, I like Pat. He's 9,100 this week. Uh, fifth last week and first the week before. So probably in terms of actual f form of finishes, the hottest guy in the field. Uh, he hasn't played this tournament before. And he sits 22nd in my stats. But the week he won, I think he was like 45th in my stats. So he's just, uh, I mentioned before, he's a really streaky guy. If he's playing well, you always want to take him. Because he, he'll either finish top 10 or he'll finish like last. So... Um, I like Patrick. The rest of the list, um, there's four more guys. Patrick Cantley, 8,900, hasn't played this year. No tournament history. 16th in the stats. Phil Mickelson, uh, 8,800, price pretty low for him. Uh, he is a third in his only start this year. That was three weeks ago at the Safeway. He finished 14th here in 2014, and I have him 21st in my stats rankings. Xander Shockley, 8,700, 72nd last week, but third. The week before, again, he has not played here, and he's 10th in my stats. Tommy Fleetwood, kind of similar to Matthew Fitzpatrick in that he plays most of his time on the European Tour. Um, he's $8,600 priced on DraftKings. Didn't play last week, but 6th and 25th two weeks prior on the European Tour. Uh, tournament history, did not play here last year, but 30th, 24th, 18th. So three top 30ths in his, three top 30s in his uh, three starts. And 27th in the stats, so it doesn't jump off the page. But, again, 
might be able to get some good value out of him. So out of those uh, 85 to 9,900, uh, I like Leishman, Stenson, Casey, and Perez. So moving down the list, we have, there's 20 guys uh, priced between 7,500 to 8,500. I removed three of them. So there's 17 that I'll go over. I like one, two, three, four, five, six. I like about eight of them. Uh, Patrick Reed is the highest price, 8,500. He finished 11th last week. Uh, Terminal history, 60th, 7th, 22nd. Not bad. And 30th in the stats. Ross Fisher is a guy I like quite a bit this week, 8,400. Spends his time on the European tour. Uh, didn't play last week, but a second and a second the two weeks prior to that. Uh, his tournament history, sixth place here last year, third place the year before, 20th in my stats. So he looks pretty good at that price. Daniel Berger, 8,300. Uh, 54th last week. Good tournament history, though. Second and 11th the pre prior two years here. And 42nd in the stats. So a little bit inconsistent there. Uh, Tyrell Hatton, I like him this week, 8,200. Didn't play last week, but his last two starts prior to that on the European Tour. Both wins. Uh, tournament history here, 23rd, 54th, and 34th in my stats, but he's first in par 4s, 450 to 500, which the majority of the par 4s this week are. Um, so yeah, I'll probably take a flyer on him. Rafael cabrera Bayo, another guy that looks good, 8,100, 11th and 10th, his last two starts. Uh, tournament history, 19th here last year. He's 51st in the stats, which doesn't bode well, but the rest of uh, his tournament history and his recent form Definitely going to be playing RCB this week. Um, actually, this in general, this pocket of 8,500 to 7,500, there's a lot of good players there. You could pretty much make a lineup just out of this area. Uh, but moving down, Francesco Molinari, 8,000. Another guy I like quite a bit. Didn't play last week, but sixth the week before on the European Tour. Uh, sixth and 21st in tournament history and 17th in uh, stats rankings for the field. Underneath him, we got Adam Scott. 7,900, 25th last week, uh, term history 14th, 70th, 12th, uh, so pretty good, he's fared well here, and 12th in the stats. Um, below him, Alexander Norin, 7,900 as well, didn't play last week, 38th the week before on the European Tour, term history of 12th and 54th, uh, 23rd in the stats. Norin's sort of a confusing guy for me, he's high in the world rankings, but he's just never done anything to really jump out for me. Uh, below him, Lucas Glover, another guy I do like, 7,800, 15th, 7th, and 30th his last three weeks on the PJ Tour, so obviously good form. Has not played this course, though, uh, but he does sit 7th in my stats. So, again, going to be taking a lot of Lucas Glover. Matt Kuchar, 7,700, really low price for him, but he hasn't played this year. He did finish last year on a high, 10th and 5th in his two playoff starts. Tournament history, 21st year last year, and he sits 8th in my stats. Uh, so I like Cooch, just hasn't played much recently. Uh, Finau, 7,700, another, again, low price for him. 26th last week, didn't play the week before, but at a safe way, he finished second. He has not played this course, but he is 14th in my stats, and third in par fives, which uh, par fives will be there for the taking this week. Below him, Brandon Grace, 7,600. Uh, recent form, 15th last week, 32nd the week before. In this tournament, he's finished 30th, 5th, and 39th the last three years. And he's 27th in my stats. I like him this week. Uh, Russell Hanley, sort of on the fence with him. 7,600, 33rd last week. In 2015, he finished 35th at this event. And he's 27th also on my stats. So probably not going to play him, but uh, that name at that price couldn't really go wrong. Chez Revy, he's a guy that's just killing it. Uh, 7,500. I mentioned he's the only guy that's played in every event this year. Um, his last three starts, 15th, 17th, 13th. So form-wise, he's right there. Hasn't played in this event. Uh, and is 26th in my stats rankings. Below him, Kyle Stanley at 7,500. 19th and 21st place finishes the last two weeks. Again, no tournament history. And 18th in my stats. Thomas Peters below him, 7,500. Uh, I like Thomas, the German bomber. So this course looks like he, he could take advantage of it if he uh, if he's playing well. 28th and 44th his last two weeks. Not too special, but uh, tournament history, 14th and 23rd. Pretty good. And uh, he's 9th in my stats. First, though, in par 4 performance of that, those yard, that 450 to 500 range. And second in approach. So some key stats that he's thriving in. Moving down the list. Kiridach, Effie Barnrat. 
Yeah, try saying that five times fast. Kiri Detch, Afi Barnrat. Uh, he rounds out this 7,500 uh, tier. He is right at 7,500. Didn't play last week, but second and 15th the two weeks prior on the Euro Tour. Uh, his turn history, 30th and 55th in two tries here, and 72nd in my stats. Below that in the seven, so I guess anything below 7,500. Um, there are 43 guys in this range. To be honest, there really wasn't much there that I liked anything to do with. There's only seven guys that I sort of picked out that I might sort of mix into my lineups. Uh, Charles Schwarzel, 7,400. 28th and 48th his last two starts. Tournament history, 30th, 35th, 64th, and 32nd in my stats. Brian Herman, 7,400. Fifth last week. No tournament history, 55th in the stats. So you see how he's going to be some form, but no history, not good stats. Still, though, worth a flyer. Bill Hawes hasn't played the last two weeks, but had a 17th at the Safeway. Uh, fourth here last year, didn't play the year before, but 48th and 21st, the two before that. So he's familiar with the course, 39th in stats. Uh, Bernd Weisberger, yep, Weisberger, 7,300. Uh, didn't play last week, 45th the week before, 35th and 17th at this tournament history, 24th to win my stats. Uh, Thorborn Olesen, 7,300. Didn't play last week, 32nd and a missed cut in his last two starts on the Euro. Uh, 19th and a 6th in this tournament, though. So pretty good course history. Uh, sits 40th in my stats rankings. Hudson Swafford, 7,200. 28th and 54th, his last two starts. No tournament history and 35th in the stats. And of all the guys in this range, the one guy I probably will take more than any others. A uh, bit of a surprise is... I don't even know how to say this name. Zin... Excuse me for this. Zin Jun Zhang. Uh, he's 7,000, so you can you can uh, mix in a bit of pricier guys if you take him. Uh, 37th at the Safeway. In this tournament, he finished 21st last year, 46th the year before, and he's 19th in the stats. So in terms of value, he's probably the only guy in that uh, range that sticks out of value, but uh, there's a couple names there. Charles Schwartzel, Bill Haas. Getting those guys under 7,500, you kind of feel obligated to take a swing. Um, that being said, though, my optimal lineup for the week, if I had to just choose one lineup, again, I usually do 10, about 10 lineups, um, but if I were to just do one, optimally, I think it would be Ches Rivi, 7,500, Lucas Glover, 7,800, Francesco Molinari, 8,000, Terrell Hatton, 8,200, Pat Perez, 9,100, and Paul Casey, 9,400. That'll take you right to 50,000. Um, there's a lot of guys that are really close though that I'm like between those six guys and these couple guys I'm pretty much going to mix and match and then uh, pull in a few other guys from the rest of the sheet but guys that are, that are really close to being that optimal would be Brandon Grace 7600 Tony Finau 7700 Rafael Cabrero Bayo 8100 Ross Fisher 8400 Mark Leishman 9900 I really like him I just couldn't fit him into that optimal lineup um and Hideki Matsuyama, of course, but he's 11,400, so not going to be playing him as much, but uh, the top guys, as I mentioned before, he's definitely the top guy. Hope everyone enjoys the tournament this week. Um, a reminder to check out my blog, Teeing Off blog. Um, I have more information there on the the event. This I'll actually post the spreadsheet so you guys can take a look, uh, see for yourself what you like, what you don't like. Um, yeah, follow me on Twitter at RJMCC, U-L-L-O-U-G-H. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, open to positive, negative, any sort of reaction. Uh, follow me on iTunes and SoundCloud. It's Teeing Off Podcast. Thanks again for listening. I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Enjoy the event in Shanghai, the last WGC event of the 2017 calendar year. I'll talk to you next Wednesday.